First we checked the capacitor and we replaced it because we saw that it had that bubble or swelling on the end. Since that didn't fix it, we discovered that the uh, overload relay or the overload, uh, yeah, the overload relay had popped. So we engaged that and then we saw that the motor turned slowly and then we checked the voltages on the input and output side of the contactor and since that looked normal we can conclude that this induction motor is damaged and will need replaced. This capacitor start induction motor is not spinning when you turn it on. No sound is heard, no spinning or anything. So we're going to replace the capacitor uh, the start capacitor but uh, the first thing to do the very first thing to do is to discharge the capacitor that's on there so uh, before I discharge it I am going to just show you with the meter um, if there's any voltage present on it so I have it set to volts DC and then I'm just going to touch one side with each do um, try not to cross the leads. It could spark. So we have half of a volt. So it probably wouldn't spark. But we're going to uh, take precaution to slowly discharge this capacitor anyway. Um, so remember that if you ever complete the circuit between the two, then current will flow. You could safely touch one side, but you still want to... Uh, probably not touch any of it. So I'm just going to clip on to that side here and then clip on to one side of the resistor. Okay, so then whenever I touch the red to the other side, um, it will slowly drain off that half a volt. And we shouldn't see a spark because the resistor limits the current. So, in fact, I'm, I'm going to uh, clip this on, if I can get a good, there we go. And now that my hands are free, I can check it with the meter and see if we still have half a volt of charge or if that's changed. So it looks like it's at uh, 250 millivolts, which is a quarter of a volt. So it's, I mean, it's definitely at a safe level. Um, actually, anything less than 50 volts would probably be safe. So we're, at, that's good. But if we want, we can wait another minute and it'll go fully down to zero. All right, so let's do one final check here. It's at 19 millivolts, which is practically zero. So I'll just disconnect that guy and then one, Final thing, I will just go ahead and touch both. Now that, I don't know, it's just, it's okay to be paranoid with these because they have the capacity to hold a deadly amount of charge. Uh, but now that it's fully discharged, it's uh, absolutely down to zero. So it's safe to work with the uh, disconnecting the contacts and stuff like that. Um, here's the new one. It should be discharged coming out of the package, but again, you know, you want to follow the same steps and it's already discharged, so that's good. Oftentimes, you can visually tell if a capacitor is bad. These may look very similar, but you actually see there's a slight bulge on the one that I replaced. And I can push on it, and uh, I can feel for sure that that is bulged up, whereas this one sits flat. The good one sits flat. So I believe that there's gases on the inside, uh, and that is a sign of a failed capacitor. So I am uh, pleased to see that. So we're going to uh, continue with the test. 200 microfarad capacitor. We just replaced it with a 300 microfarad capacitor. So ideally it would be matched, but that's what we had. So we're going to go ahead and see if it starts. If it does start, then we can go ahead and get the right capacitor shipping on the way. So unfortunately, 
Still nothing happens when we turn the machine on or try to. So perhaps there's no power getting to the motor or we have to analyze the path from this box to the motor and look for breakages along the way. All right, so uh, since I just pressed the on button, I would expect that if there was a path of current to the motor, that the capacitor, even if it was the wrong value or something, that it would at least be charged up and to some degree. Well, whenever I test the voltage, you can see down there it's uh, 19, that's millivolts, which is really nothing. Uh, so it's, there's um, probably no path of current through this wire. So um, now we need to check and see uh, what this box is. If there's a fuse in there, that would be probably pretty suspect. This here is a breaker. We're going to push it to reset it. So when we turn it on, the motor moves very slowly. I'm not going to run it for a long time like that because it's probably drawing a lot of current. Well, first let's check to see if there's voltage coming into this contactor. You see the white and black wires. We're going to check the screws right under those um, and we should have about 240 volts so that looks good first we checked the capacitor and we replaced it because we saw that it had that bubble or swelling on the end since that didn't fix it we discovered that the uh, overload relay or the overload uh, yeah the overload relay had popped so we engaged that and then we saw that the motor turned slowly and then we checked the voltages on the input and output side of the contactor and since that looked normal we can conclude that this induction motor is damaged and will need replaced.